Hello and uh, welcome to Long Road. My name is Chris Cope. I'm Head of uh, Sport, PE and Healthcare at the College and the aim of this video is to give you an overview of what you might study um, for A-level PE. So I'm going to try and go through the course structure for you, the assessment process, uh, where students who've studied the course recently have progressed to and also additional curriculum opportunities. Um, and then if you have any questions whatsoever, you can follow those up um, uh, by contacting me or my colleague Peter Charlwood at the college. Peter is the course team leader for head of, uh, for uh, physical education and uh, both Peter and I will teach you um, in the time that you study A-level PE at the college. So let's look first of all at the exam board we use. We use EDUCAS which is the English arm of WJEC, the Welsh board. Um, we've worked closely with EDUCAS now for over 12 years and in fact, uh, Peter and I helped uh, with some of the uh, setting up of the original um, uh, EDUCAS course where, way back in um, 2008. The theory uh, areas for EDUCAS are broken into five areas. And if you have studied GCSE PE or if you study BTEC Sport, you'll probably recognise uh, some of these areas. So what I'm now going to do is to, is to run through briefly the five areas, the five theory areas that make up the course. And as I say, you'll probably ho or hopefully recognise some of these areas from your uh, previous sports studies. If you haven't studied sport before or GCSEP, that's not a problem. It just simply means that you'll need to try and, and do some small additional work to try and catch up. So let's have a look at the five areas that we deliver as part of the theory course. Okay, so first up is exercise, physiology, training and performance. This is linked to um, aspects like training uh, methods. So you may have looked at continuous training and fartlet training and um, interval training as part of uh, GCSEP or a part of BTEC Sport. But we'll also look at energy systems, uh, the ATPPC system, the lactic acid system uh, and the um, aerobic system. There is work on diet and nutrition and there is also work on fitness testing. So there's some practical elements to this uh, particular part of the course and it's one that you will probably have a sort of reasonable amount of awareness from through your participation in sport. That's area one. Area two is movement analysis, technology and biomechanics. So this area is sort of quite broad in terms of what it covers. The movement analysis is to do with the skeletal system and the muscular system. So you'll look at agonists, antagonists, you'll look at joint movements like flexion, extension, abduction and adduction. And you'll also look at planes and axes, frontal planes, sagittal planes, transverse axes, etc. Um, again, if you're not, not familiar with these terms, don't worry, you will be uh, as the course progresses. We also look at technology. So um, technology is an increasingly important area of sports science and um, a number of our students, I'll tell you later on, um, when they progress are going to do things like sports analytics and that would be part of uh, the technology. We'll look at the uh, influence of VAR on decision making um, and the biomechanics. We'll look at aspects such as uh, Newton's three laws. We'll focus particularly on linear motion and angular motion. Uh, we'll look at the moment of inertia and we'll look at levers uh, and impulse. So. A little bit scientific in nature, uh, the first and the second sections, you know, I need to be honest about that. Um, so uh, if you've got a good science background, that will certainly help you in those uh, two areas. Area three, there's a change of emphasis. So area three is to do with sports psychology. And uh, sports psychology um, uh, looks at various aspects uh, that of, of, of your psychological profile that may influence your uh, uh, participation in sport. So personality is one. Are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? Um, how do you respond to stress? I was recently watching the, um, uh, the Michael uh, uh, Jordan uh, video, The Last Dance, and of course um, when you talk about Jordan you talk about his ability to perform at the very highest level at the most important time. And that's really about how you deal with uh, arousal and you deal with anxiety levels and it mentions things like the clutch gene uh, uh, as an example. So that's something that you would look at. You'll also look at motivation, why are some athletes exceptionally motivated, Jordan again being a good example. And it looks at aspects like aggression in sport. Um, so 
sports psychology is area three, probably an area where you may not have had that much uh, previous experience with that one. A related area is skill acquisition. And um, again, this is to do with the psychological aspects of performance. Uh, whereas areas one and areas two, more to do with the sort of psycho, uh, scientific and uh, physiological aspects of performance. In skill acquisition, you think of someone like Federer, an exceptionally skilled performer in his field. And uh, you will examine uh, the difference between skills and abilities. You will look at different learning theories uh, that relate to sport and different types of practice. Um, mass practice, for example, distributed practice, and different types of learners. Are you in the cognitive stage of learning? Are you in the associative stage? And some of you who come to college will be in the autonomous stage of learning and will be able to um, perform at very high levels uh, of performance on the sports stage. The final area is slightly uh, a slightly unique area um, in that it really looks now at sport and society and the history of sport and um, it has a different sort of feel to it. It's, it tends to generate answers uh, for the exams that are slightly uh, longer in nature. It often uh, is used for essay questions. But again, it will be areas that if you're keen on sport, you may be aware of commercialization of sport. You know, with the current lockdown, the, uh, the Premier League and the football leagues are looking at the amount of revenue they're potentially going to lose. As they, you look at the, the whole commercial package of sport, You'll look at excellence uh, in sport and you'll look at mass participation, two ends of the uh, spectrum. And you'll also look at some history of sport. You know, we're in Cambridge and Cambridge is in an incredibly important centre for uh, development of sport, particularly through the universities. The very first uh, game of um, association football was played on Parker's Peace and the very first 14 rules for association football were written at Trinity College in Cambridge. So, although it may say now, Cambridge is the home of football. Those are the five areas of the course, the five theory areas. And um, for the next section, I'm going to explain to you how they link in with the uh, assessment of the course overall. Again, I want to be honest so that you choose the right subject. It is very much a theory-based course. It's quite different, for example, than uh, GCSE in that respect. So you have to be prepared for the, uh, the theoretical basis of the course. The bulk of the course is examined through external assessment. Basically, you sit two exams at the end of your second year. Those exams are two hours in length, unless you have extra time. And each of those two exams contributes to 35% of your overall uh, A-level PE grade. Okay, um, Both papers... Um, have questions that are relatively short, um, some medium answer uh, questions, and then particularly on paper two, there are some longer questions. So two theory papers will provide you with 70% of your grade. A further 15% will come from a project. The projects are known as the Personal Performance Analysis and Evaluation Projects. And for your chosen sport, you will write a project to allow you to improve your performance in that sport and you will be given guidance as how to do that. The projects break into four different sections and uh, Pete and I will give you uh, support and guidance with the projects but they will effectively be your projects and you will have to quantify um, what you want to achieve in your project and you'll have to come up with some different ways of measuring the success of that project and look at the theory behind it. So that's 85%, the remaining 15% is a practical uh, sport, one chosen sport. You can do that sport as either a performer or as a coach, one of those two options. Um, now again, if you want to do the research, uh, which I would strongly advise you to do, there isn't a totally free range for the uh, sports. There is a, a, a list that the exam boards have produced, it's the same for each exam board, and you have to choose uh, a sport from that list. M all the major sports are, are pretty much there but um, there are some sports that you may have done in the past that you wouldn't now allow be able to do that. So martial arts is one of them um, and fencing uh, is another one. So do check on that list, it's on the EDUCAST website um, uh, for, as to whether your sport is um, uh, one of the accepted sports. Finally, 
let's look at typical progression routes. So what I've tried to do is to make this as up to date as possible and look at the progression routes of a number of our students over the last two years. The main, the main route uh, is for students to go to university. Now they may be using PE as their main uh, uh, subject and they may be going to do a sports degree. So where have we, got, where have we had students going to over the, uh, the last um, two cohorts, the last two years? Certainly, you'll all know Loughborough and, and people always sort of gravitate towards Loughborough um, and we have had a, a good number of students going to Loughborough primarily to study sport and exercise science uh, and to look at sports uh, coaching as the two main courses. Hertfordshire is an increasingly popular university for those who are looking to do physiotherapy and sports therapy. Uh, we've also had students going to Bradford University which is one of the leading centres for physiotherapy as well. PE teaching, well, yeah, I mean, that's where I started off before coming here many years ago, and um, a good number of students go into PE teaching. It could well be that a number of the students uh, who taught you, or the staff that taught you PE at school, may well have come to Long Road and uh, may well have done A-level PE. Brighton and Bedfordshire are two common destinations for those students. And um, on a more modern, uh, up-to-date basis, they're the talks traditional routes. Sports journalism uh, at Leeds, we've got two students going to do sports journalism this year. And sports analytics is a growing area. Sports analytics is the study um, of data and how you can use quantifiable data to uh, improve the quality of your team. Liverpool have been very skilled in terms of using data. It relates back to um, uh, um, baseball in America and a very famous film called Moneyball. That's where this all looks back at. So sports analytics um, is an area that one of our students is going to study uh, this year um, and um, it offers some great opportunities. You might look at apprenticeships. Um, David Lloyd, for example, uh, and do a follow-on course for, for personal training. Uh, or you might go into something like sports coaching as a job, as employment. We had a couple of students uh, last year that worked for Norwich City now and uh, a number of students that have joined Premier Sports. You might even come back to Long Road, you never know, and uh, work for me, <laughs> which sounds odd, but we've got two members of the staff who um, were, uh, did PE here at Long Road or sport at Long Road and are, are now uh, back joining us. Okay. Local links, well, one of our big local links was with Anglia Ruskin University. Um, now, Anglia Ruskin has really um, raised its game um, over uh, the last few years. It's a great place to study. One of the top 15 uh, places to study sport um, in, the, uh, in the UK based on the uh, 2018 Guardian survey. And uh, we've got some very close links um, with ARU and, and we have a, an increasing number of students that would go down to ARU. So when you're here, we will take you down for a sports therapy day if that's a course you're interested in. That's a course that they've uh, started in 2019. Um, we also will take you down for uh, work with their biomechanics lab and their strength and conditioning. These are half day visits um, whereby um, ARU take responsibility. We're there, but um, they, they provide all their facilities. They provide some absolutely um, nationally recognised uh, uh, lecturers who take you through the process. And it's a, a really nice uh, way for you to understand um, the facilities that are available at university that we don't have here and also to put you into a university environment. We also have some specialist sessions with invited staff. Um, I haven't yet done this for the PE but um, uh, uh, the lockdown sort of took this one away from me but one of my colleagues in the sport department, Ben Hudson, um, uh, knows uh, Sam Coe. Now Sam Coe was a Gamer student here many many years ago and he will run with you a fantastic session on GPS tracking and uh, computer analysis and we'll do that in a practical nature on the uh, on the hockey fields that we have and that again will contribute to area two the use of technology in sport and we'll also uh, look at we'll also have talks from Cambridge United and they'll come to you and talk to you about the coaching opportunities at uh, Cambridge United and possibly doing some work for football in the community because if you do want to work in those fields um, and, uh, and ultimately gain a job in those fields you will need to have experience and uh, at the present time Ashley Dyer uh, is um, an ex-student and an ex-member of staff here who is heading up the, the football in the community program at um, 
Cambridge United has been very, very uh, good in terms of helping students uh, to enter uh, and work on, on that particular programme. So that's A-Level PE. And um, uh, I'd like to thank you for, for listening in. Obviously, there will be opportunities for you to ask um, further questions. Um, obviously, with the lockdown period, I'm not quite sure yet how that's going to work, but those opportunities will categorically be there. I very much hope that's given you an idea of the course um, and uh, what it involves, how it's assessed, and um, what it might lead to, if you, particularly if you see it as your, as your main A-level. Um, I really recommend and strongly encourage you to work uh, very hard on the summer work. That will give both Pete and I an idea of your commitment to the subject. If you produce some top quality summer work, that would create an excellent first impression for us. And uh, will also allow you to make a, um, a great start to the course, uh, hit the ground running is one of the, sort of the most popular terms. It would be great um, to see you here in September. Um, Long Road is a, a, a great place to study if you're a, a motivated student and you want to be part of the process. And um, you'll do that uh, alongside well-trained and well-qualified well staff who will do the very best to support you uh, in, your, in your courses. I've been here for 27 years, so um, it must be, they must have something about it. And it would be great to see you um, in the 2020 uh, 20 intake. Any questions, as I say, please do email and you'll pick up the details. Thank you very much.